Hello there, friends, and welcome or welcome back to the series where I'm completing an Animal Crossing Island in 30 days. Now, today we've got a lot of big things happening, but before we get too ahead of ourselves, here are the rules that we laid out for this island challenge. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into day nine. All right, gang, we've got a lot of big things on our plate today. First off, let's go ahead and check our mail so this thing can stop ringing while I'm trying to talk to you. Oh, hey! Speaking of big news, as of today, I have officially upgraded the house completely. So let's add decorating our house and like customizing it to the list of things to do today because like it's free. So even if I want to change it later, I'll just make it look cute for the meantime. I literally heard footsteps walking up and I was ready to fight Eugene, but it's a cutie bones. Hi, buddy. What's up? Aren't mornings neat? What's the latest, bud? Me too, Bones. I also overslept today, but that's okay. Sometimes you need to take a little extra snooze time in the morning. And actually, talking to Bones made me remember that freaking Shep is on our island as of today. So let's run over and go say hi to him. I'm so excited. Not just because his addition means that I don't have to do any more villager hunts. Oh my god! And I totally forgot that we moved the shop! Sweet! All right, all right. Back on track, let's go say hi to Mr. Shep. Oh my God, his house is so cute. Hi, Olive, let's talk to you real quick while we're here. I get that, Olive, me too. If it isn't our boy, hello, Shep. The man of the hour. Yo, Ash, thanks again for inviting me here. Yep, thanks to you, I made my big Edelwood debut today. I think I'm going to be a big star here. Shep, you already are. You have no idea. But first, I've got some unpacking to do, so I'll see you around. All right, well, we will see you later, buddy. Bye! All right, now I'm going to be real with you guys for a second. Um, anytime I'm leaving a house and I've, like, just finished talking to one of my villagers, whenever I leave and they, like, do their little wave bye, I take my right thumb off the joystick and I wave goodbye back, which is kind of embarrassing, but, like, also I think it's really cute and one of the things I love about doing in this game. Let's talk to some more of our villagers. I feel like we haven't done nearly enough of that. Too big to see across, but too small for a sea monster to attack. Very good insight, Biscuit. Very good. Oh, and oh my god, this is the first time I'm seeing the inside of Gonzo's house. This is freaking adorable. What? He's got such a cozy log cabin. Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay, but he's crafting. We don't really need the DIY recipes, but I wanted to talk to you anyways, so... <gasps> a spooky lantern? Yes, absolutely. Well, thanks, Gonzo. And over the last couple episodes, you guys have probably seen this tree that continues to stay in my inventory. I'll show you exactly where this tree goes. I have been holding on to him just for this moment. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Finally. Okay. Um, so I had talked to my villagers on my to-do list. Who else are we missing? Let's see, we talked to Biscuit. Oh, we need to find Deirdre, Billy, Anchovy. And that's it. All right. Deirdre, Billy, and Anchovy. Let's see if we can find them. They might be at the KK concert. Nope, just the two that I don't want to talk to, which is actually really convenient for me. Oh my gosh, and I almost forgot. Isabel said that we have a campsite villager today here too. So let's see who it is. Oh, I'm sorry I asked. Okay, um, it literally looks like we're missing everyone. I don't know where everyone else is, but while we're over here, we can go ahead and peek into Nook's Cranny. Maybe some of our villagers are in here. Hey, there's Deirdre. Hey there, bestie. Literally, you guys can see that I haven't talked to any of these villagers, like, as I've been on the island, because literally the only one that I can give a gift to is Billy. That is the only one I've talked to enough. Oh. Oh. This is awkward. Never mind then. All right. Well, with with checking Nook's Cranny, talking to all the villagers that we could find for now anyways, and visiting the campsite villager, I think that that means it's time to get right back to work on our entrance build that we can finally finish up. I'm not entirely sure where I'll call it today, but... 
we're just gonna build based on the vibes. And right now I've got a lot of inspiration flowing. So I'm gonna put some music on and lock in for the next couple hours to work on this build and throw you over to voiceover, Ashley. All right, I have lit my cozy pumpkin spice candle and let's jump right into this build. Now, what you're seeing me do here first is like, I had these couple little items that I picked up from a treasure island that I wanted to add to the existing areas that we've already worked on to kind of like cap them off as complete. Like I wanted to switch the trash can to Rover's briefcase by the entrance because I thought that that looked more like someone was visiting. And because I originally wanted that trash can to be like a mailbox, but I've since decided that I want to do a little post office build somewhere else. So it made more sense to not have the mailbox at the front and instead put it at wherever our post office eventually ends up going. And this begins the saga of me messing with this newspaper stand that we put together in the last episode. You guys are going to see this change like probably three or four different times in just various little ways because I just, I could not figure out what to do with capping off the end of the walls in front of resident services. Like that's another struggle you're gonna see me have in a minute, but boy, did we struggle. It was, I could not find something here for the life of me. I tried to put one of the little decorative pillars there and it didn't really work because it wasn't exactly the right colors, which why? I eventually settled with this ruined pillar, which looks really good. I actually didn't plan to use this until we got to the like cryptid museum area. But now my next problem is trying to figure out how to fill in this space here because like, I tried so many different things and I could not find something to just jut up nicely against the back of the medieval wall. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I don't know if I tried moving it to see if it was on a half tile and it isn't. So I quite literally have no idea if there was anything different I could have done to get that to work, but I eventually just cut my losses and I kind of scooted the wall on the side to where it filled in that gap um, between the ruined pillar and the front walls, which I thought looked pretty good after all. And you know how I mentioned that I got some items from a treasure island off camera? Well, one of those is this iron fence that I have never used before, but like it looked perfect, like freaking perfect. I don't know how I didn't even know this fence existed. I was totally prepared to use that like iron and stone fencing, even though I wasn't that excited about it, but very pleasantly surprised with how cute the iron fencing is. All right, but it's time we move on to figuring out how we're going to cover the rest of resident services. I think I'm just gonna kind of continue with these medieval wall sides. Um, I refuse to let go of the idea that I can fill in that backside, but eventually we do let it go. And I decide that we'll just have to put some cute little decorations in there instead. While I was playing around with trying to decide how I was going to fill in the backside of resident services, I ended up using these extra jail bars that we had that we had originally tried to put in front, um, but then realized that it kind of wasn't the vibe we were going for. I actually end up layering them in the back with some of the medieval castle walls and it actually comes out looking really good. We do end up having to make a trip in the middle of this build to get some more castle walls for some reason uh, and some more jail bars because I just didn't realize how many of those we were gonna need for this because this is the Axo Kindness channel and we do not operate on plans, we operate on vibes. And prior to this build, the vibe was not so many castle walls, but here we are. And speaking of, let's go ahead and run and grab those things so that way we can just finish up the section of the build before I get distracted. All right, we are back from the treasure island and I've got plenty of things to work with. So let's hop right back into working on resident services. But yeah, this resident service area actually ends up being a rare instance where basically the first time I tried a design, I absolutely loved it. Um, we had to do a little bit of adjusting and moving some things around, but we didn't do any major changes. Not like what we'll end up doing with the newspaper area in a minute. Um, which is really good because so far the most intimidating rule of this challenge has been that once we mark a build as complete, I can't go back and change it. So it's, it's really reassuring to see that so far I haven't had to go back and change much because I've actually been really happy with it. And that's like, that's new for me. I, I don't know if it's just that this series is giving me a lot of motivation to play and that's helping me not second guess and question what I'm working on so much, but I'll take it. Like, I'm so excited about the all these builds we're working on. But moving on, we're actually working on expanding all these paths to the left side. I kind of have an idea where 
the slanted down path over here leads to like the little neighborhood section, which I'm not entirely sure how that's gonna come together yet, but in my heart, I know I want the neighborhood to end up over this way. So this is kind of subject to change, but just to kind of remind myself that this is where I want the neighborhood to go. And then the pathway that leads up towards the back of the island is gonna lead up to eventually an incline that takes you to the shopping district. Kind of like with the right side, I have a very loose idea of what I'd like to put in each of these places. Not entirely sure how it's all going to come together, but that's what the fun part is. We get to figure that out together. And by figure it out, I mean you guys are going to watch me struggle until we come up with something I like. Now I'm going to take a sec and stop narrating what we're talking about on screen and actually kind of gush about the series so far, because if you haven't seen my community posts, you might not know this, but I did actually pre-record some of these videos ahead of time, just because I've got like vacations and stuff coming up this month that I can't really get around. Um, and I wanted to make sure I could have these all come out consistently throughout the month of October. So. Rest assured, they've been completed in 30 real life days, just maybe not 30 consecutive days. But that out of the way, what that means is I'm just now getting caught up with when the videos are coming out live. Um, to be totally honest, I'm recording this day on when you guys are going to see day four, so just a little bit ahead. But you know, YouTuber logistics and things. The point I'm trying to get to is I cannot begin to express my gratitude for all of the support on the series so far like at this point we are about to hit 500 subscribers which is absolutely insane like i can't believe that 500 people want to stick around and watch me just ramble and play animal crossing so thank you guys and everyone who's interacted with the series so far left comments i love reading your comments and i love hearing about the things you guys are doing on your own islands and like Someone that I interacted with in the comments mentioned that they love how I call Tom Nook Thomas and mentioned that it kind of sounds fancy like Thomas Nookington. And I will be calling Tom Thomas Nookington from now until the end of time. Like anytime we have to interact with this man, he is not Tom Nook, he is Thomas Nookington. <laughs> but like, that's what I mean. I love to interact with you guys and just kind of have this shared experience as we're going through the series. That's what this was all about. Like I just wanted to document my process and get to like build a little community of you guys along the way. So thank you. But I'll stop gushing now. What you guys have been seeing while I ramble is my inner cottagecore girly breaking out because I decided that this little area would be perfect for a park and a quilt and a cute little picnic spot. And don't get too attached to the first images of this picnic setup because it's gonna change slightly through a couple different variations as we work on this build, but this is kind of the vibe. And what I'm planning for this walkway is for it to be like a little path that leads you down to the beaches where I actually have come up with an idea for the beaches. I don't know if any of you guys have been up to like New England, Maine kind of area. I was lucky enough to go with my boyfriend to visit his family a couple summers ago. The rocky beaches of Maine are just jaw-droppingly beautiful. And because Noah Khan is one of the big inspirations behind this island, I've been thinking a lot about Maine for some reason. And I've decided that I actually think I want to cover all of our beaches and like various rocky items and kind of I'll decorate around them it won't be just rocks obviously there'll be some custom codes and things but fingers crossed that that's gonna come out as good in theory as it does in my head all right but back to the park I had this idea to put these little log stakes there but I actually couldn't decide between the two variations I wasn't sure if I liked these orange ones more or if I actually liked these brown more natural looking ones more I want really badly to like these brown ones instead of the orange ones, but this area is just so brown already with the stone and all of the pathways and things that I actually think I like the bright orange ones better. They kind of add a little pop of color. This is weird for me, guys. I am always one that likes the natural things more, but especially after we added the finishing touches in this section, I think that the orange ones are really what this place needed to make it pop. All right, but we'll come back to that later whenever we reveal all of the final areas that we have completed. But for now, it's time to address the situation of the newspaper stand. I've been talking about it. I've been alluding to it. We're gonna struggle with this. I 
ended up removing those bookcases actually permanently and instead using this fence that I freaking love to line the pathway along the back. And I think that it makes it look kind of less like a formal building and more like a little stand that someone might set up near resident services where there's a bunch of people coming and going. And I like that vibe lots more than the formal building structure. And we'll have plenty of space to do some actual fake buildings in the shopping district. Like I think I probably will give Shep a little record store and we might do a little plant shop and things. Obviously we haven't made it there yet, so we'll have to save that problem for when we make it there. But all I can say for sure is that I really like the final iteration of that newspaper stand, like a lot. Oh, and now you're getting to watch my artistic talent in action as I crudely write post office on a design code. So that way my brain remembers that we wanna put a post office here because I will forget. And that about sums up all the progress we made on the left-hand side of resident services. We don't do too much over here on the right side. I just kind of play around with some ideas of how I might want to do the entrance to the farmer's market. But the last thing we're going to do is just add a couple finishing touches into resident services. And with that, it's time to show off our completed entrance area. And ta-da! With that, we have officially marked our first build off of our checklist as complete. Not only does this feel like our first real milestone for the island, having done our first build, but I'm also really loving the vibe of our island so far. So I'm just hoping we can keep this momentum as we continue to work on Edelwood. As always, if you've made it to this point in the video, thank you so, so much for sticking around. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, all the YouTube jazz on your way out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Aha, you thought I forgot to customize my house. I mean, I did, but I'm trying my best, okay?